You're watching The Ugly Inside, subscribe below. Okay, welcome to The Ugly Inside television. Today we have a very special guest, what is abs an absolute Southampton legend who's responsible and led us to our one and only major trophy at Wembley in 1976. The BBC commentary at the end of that game was as follows. Laurie McMenemy, the man they said if he came into the professional ranks as a manager, they'd carve him up. They didn't carve him up. He's brought his team to Wembley and they've won the silver trophy. He's done it for Southampton and they are absolutely euphoric. Well, welcome to the Ugly Inside Television, <laughs> Laurie. There you go. We've moved on a bit since the fanzine. They were going to carve me up, were they? Yeah, they I were going to carve you up. That. That's what the BBC said. So. Oh, well, I'll get me on back on them. Yeah. I'll well, watch, thanks. I'll watch ITV. Thankfully, they didn't <laughs> carve Laurie up. He stayed for 12 years and we, we got to another final and we finished in the top six in many of those seasons. So yeah. a fantastic achievement, Laurie. And uh, like I say, the ugly inside, we moved on a bit from the fans. Well, they're actually looking very swish and posh. I'm very impressed. I remember your first time, your little paper, wasn't it? You yeah, yeah. Upsetting everybody yeah. in Southampton and very critical. But uh, no, it was good because it gave the supporters a voice. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think uh, when they work hard and pay their money, they should have a voice of sorts. So yeah. well done. Uh, recently, we've, we've had the, the semi final with Liverpool. Yeah. obviously and that has invoked memories of 76 because we weren't expected to go to Liverpool and win that's right yeah, we, mm -hmm. e even the home leg you, you're thinking this is tough mm -hmm. this is tough we've got there we're at Wembley like we were in 76 after the Crystal Palace game mm -hmm. and now we're facing Manchester United not just one of the biggest clubs in England but one of the biggest clubs in the world, the world yeah. in the world I mean how was it like for you in, in 76 what were you thinking after the semi <laughs> Well, we were always the underdog because yeah. we we were not only were they so big, we were a second division team. Yes, and of course they were first, and um, it was uh, it was a little bit like Leicester last year winning the league against all odds. Mm -hmm. It was a fairy tale, but I think um, I've always said, looking back, and it's an awful long time. You know, your memory goes a bit, but uh, we had and I had in my team certain players who had been there before uh -huh. and done it. And um, and I think on the day, the balance of, of the old heads and young legs, which you know I carried on doing over the years, mm -hmm. um, on the day at Wembley certainly came up trumps. And uh, people, I mean, Mick Channon was already there. He was in a, yeah, a current international. international. Yeah. But people like Chris Nickel at the back and, and uh, uh, not Chris Nickel, sorry, uh, on the back. Mal Blythe. Mal Blythe and, um, Jim. Uh, well, Jim wasn't as old, but Mel was an older player. Jim McCallion, mm -hmm. uh, Aussie, bless him. They didn't think, I mean, that they would ever be back at that, on that level again. Mm -hmm. And um, when we got to Wembley, the light switched on. Right. They went, oh. And okay. the same happened later on in '79 with people like Alan Ball. Yeah. I mean, more in that team uh, where the light went on. But I think that uh, underneath, I secretly thought uh, we've got this far. You know, I know that the lads are going to give it all, mm. and uh, I'd looked at the Man United team. If you look at the results between the semi and the final, um, I made our team concentrate okay. each week because, I mean, to be fair, we needed to get promoted. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I still thought we maybe had a chance. And if you look at their results, they went off a bit. I think yeah, the yeah. mind was on the cup final. Yeah. They were probably getting asked uh, this function, that function, mm -hmm. and uh, it was all happy, clappy days for them. Yeah. Whereas we concentrated game after game, and um, we got the result we wanted. But uh, I don't think we ever, at any time, thought, "Oh, we're just making up the number." Yes. In the build-up to the final, I yeah. mean, obviously these days you've got thousands of analysis and, and all sorts of things. How did how did that go in the week before, you know, <clears throat> with the guys and? Because the media, well, the media yeah. gave us no chance whatsoever. The media, none of the media gave us any chance, and we were out of the no. limelight. Was that a good thing? Well, I mean, I remember the media that when you get <clears throat> through a semi, um, media from the newspapers are attached to you. Yeah. And of course, we had the number twos. Uh -huh. uh, the number ones went with Man United, and uh, the number twos were really wanting us to do well because that was like two fingers over their mates, yeah. uh, the number yeah. ones. Okay. Um, so we had a good following from them. Um, the, the, 
passion and the, the, the build up was getting really to an extent where it was getting a bit out of hand in the area mm-hmm. because there was so much excitement around mm. and um, for a club like ours you know the, the supporters hadn't been to Wembley no. before no, no. and no. Um, this was terrific for them uh, so I had to get the team out of the way I knew I'd be going mm-hmm. away but I went probably away more days than I thought I think we went away four days before the final four or five mm-hmm. and um, I took them away I think it was called Frimley, Frimley. somewhere like Sat that. on the sands or something? Yeah, yeah. well, by the sea, I remember it? it was an old manager, oh, my memories are gone, he was a, a manager who'd been at the, see, I, I knew all, all the managers at lower down because I'd, I'd been in all the four divisions over yeah. the years. Yeah. And the managers that were still around in the lower division were contacting me and saying, good luck and mm-hmm. great to see you there. And um, one of them said, where are you going? And I hadn't thought of it and he, he mentioned a little hotel who he knew the owner and it was Frimley on Sea or something right, like that. Yeah. And um, he, we booked it uh-huh. and we were, we were there and um, it, it, was, uh, it was out in the wilds, it was really uh, Frimpton, was it Frimpton? So, some name like that. Yeah. Anyway. And, um, out of the limelight basically. Yes, out yeah. of the limelight, out of the way and uh, it was perfect uh-huh. because we could just get on with it. Uh, the, we had press days, yes. But once we'd done that, they went off. And um, the, mm-hmm. what about the '76 one? Obviously, uh, I don't know if you remember the story where, w- when we were leaving the hotel uh, to go, I was shaking hands with the staff and thanking them. The team, the lads were already on the bus. We got on, and I'm sitting at the front as usual, and we, we had a police escort, motorbikes. And um, after a while, I heard laughter and all that, and I thought, oh, good, the lads are relaxed. And I looked round, and what I didn't realise is there was a, a fella on the back who I didn't know before, and he was called Freddie Starr. <laughs> oh, right, the comedian. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And he, had, he was a friend of one of the team, uh-huh. probably Aussie or somebody like that, and he'd come down, unknown to me, and he got on the bus before anybody else, and he got in the toilet on the bus, <laughs> and he waited till it had set off, come out, and then he sat with the players. So I thought, what the devil is all this about? Yeah, yeah. And um, anyway, I left him on. And uh, if you look at pictures in film, you'll probably see he, he followed us in up the tunnel, on the pitch. And I remember the band was on the pitch, I think the guards band probably. Uh-huh. And then I heard a bit of a, a laugh, and there he is marching up and down in between <laughs> the band. And, and he even finished up on the back of the bench yeah. at Wembley. Right. And at half time, I think he. he came around waving to the crowd and, I, yeah. and uh, he fought and I, I said they tried to lock the door and that was it <laughs> bye bye Freddie you've, you've had that bit and never saw him anymore I think yeah. he said well that's it and he cleared his up his career went downhill but, after but that but in a way in a way you see it enabled <laughs> the lads to relax have mm. a laugh and um, take their mind off okay because that's Excellent. the big thing and when you're going into any game mm-hmm. you, you have a, a you've got to <clears throat> focus um but when you've got that much time to build up, I mean, the journey, even though you had an escort, was still a fair journey up to Wembley. Sure. And then you're coming to Wembley and you see it all there. Yeah. Um, so somewhere of relaxing was good. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And then, of course, <clears throat> leading the team out at Wembley has to be the highlight for any manager as yeah. you're coming through that dark tunnel into the light and there's 100,000 people yeah. screaming their heads off. Yeah, true. It, it, what, what was that moment like? Well, the tunnel is was quite long because mm. don't forget we came out in the corner of the ground in those days. Yeah. And I still think <clears throat> it's a pity that doesn't happen now. Yeah, and the tunnel is fairly long, and you could see the light at the end, and and it was like I likened it to like a beehive. Yeah, you could yeah. hear a bit of a buzz because oh, okay, yeah. yeah. there's a hundred thousand in there, yeah. and then the fella from the FA comes out, and they both teams out, and you walk slowly, slowly, and the. The nearer you get to the top, the noise is getting, and, and you come out and wallop. Yeah, it's as yeah. if it explodes, you know. Uh-huh. And, uh, that first noise, and uh, you've got the long walk right from the corner flag mm-hmm. to the halfway to the line, halfway line yeah. and you're able to soak it up. And um, really, I, I think looking back, I said to the team, "This is what's going to happen." Yeah, there'll be the walk, there'll be that, there'll be the band, there'll be the national anthem. Uh, the, the Queen was there, don't forget. Yeah, in yellow and, and blue. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think it's Prince Philip came down yep. to do the introductions. So I, I explained all of that. I said, look, 
get that out of your head because yeah. at, at, at three o'clock the whistle blows and it's football mm -hmm. you know I didn't want them to be lost in the magic of everything else around yeah you know, leave concentrate that to the, on that leave game that to the supporters yeah. and leave that for when you look back later mm -hmm. on at film and, and memories and I think we did that having said that once the game started for the I think the first 15 or 20 minutes we got battered yeah and full marks yeah. to Ian Turner the goalkeeper yeah I mean Ian was he was never international class or anything like that mm -hmm. he was a good solid lad who I'd had at Grimsby and I brought him down and um, he kept us in the game yeah it must have hit every part of his body I was going to say what, what was going after about say 10 15 minutes mm. what was uh, what was going through your mind are well, we going to get battered like this all well, the time or do you think it's going to settle well, down I, I, you know I'm hoping that we can get away without letting a goal in yeah because often at the beginning of a game you'll get one side on top and providing you can get through that early spell mm -hmm. and that's what we did we got through had a second breath settled down and then it could have gone either way mm -hmm. after that mm -hmm. um, and we, if you forgot that early stage, um, either team was as good as you other, and, pretty, and either very team could have won it. Yeah. And yeah. then, of course, the classic goal came a little Bobby bless him, and uh, yeah, uh, that was seven minutes from the end, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And it was the longest seven minutes of my life, and sure. probably everybody else's. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It was a magic, magic moment. Yeah. And uh, was there any sort of particular tactics that day to shoot from that sort of distance? And no, I mean, I've always had the theory and I've got it even now. I mean, I was watching a game this week, Le Leicester in a cup replay, and a sub came on after three minutes, I think, and he, and ah, he, he, he had he hit a shot from outside the box. Yeah. And everybody's going on and on and on about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, why? It's because hardly anybody has a shot from outside the box True. anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he showed why you should do. And, yeah. Uh, but in those days, if you had a chance, you shot. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, we, we had attacking players. I mean, Mick Channon, obviously. Ozzy, bless him, mm -hmm. terrific. And um, and little Bobby fitted in. Yeah. And uh, if if you look back, and I said it at the time, I think, between the semi and the final, Bobby could have scored a hat full of goals. Mm. And mm. he kept missing them. Yeah. Missing them, or the keeper would save them. Yeah. And uh, I, w I thought, well, Bobby, <laughs> eventually you're going to get one. And yeah. then, of course, it was there. Yeah. It was at Wembley. And uh, we had a good, balanced team. And, uh -huh. um, you know, solid lads like Davy Peach, Nick Holmes, uh -huh. you know, who, who went on to play in the in other the league, final as in well. The other final, yeah, um, sure. A good balance, a good mixture. Yeah. Peter Rodriguez. Yeah. You know, I didn't mention him early on, but Peter had been captain of Wales and mm. he'd played in two World Cups yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Um, Did you feel that you know we were getting stronger as they, they kind of lost their confidence? They they took oh, well, Gordon Hill off. Gordon Hill was supposed to destroy us that day. Aye. He was a, a very nippy left winger. Left winger. Well, Gordon, you mentioned Peter Rodriguez. Um, um, uh, I'd said to Gordon because between the semi and the final, mm. I went. I mean, Ted Bates, bless him. Ted and me went and watched whenever I could. If we didn't have a game where they had a midweek game, yeah, I went to watch them. Um, and even before that, when years before and years after, I would ring Ted up and say, I'm going to see something. And Ted would always come mm. with me. And in the early days, he would show me where the grounds were. Right. Because he'd right. been there all his life. We watched them. And when I couldn't watch, if we had a game as well, Ted would go and watch. And mm. we sat together and I worked it all out. And Gordon Hill was a threat. Yeah. He yeah. was a very young, exciting left winger. And Peter Rodriguez, my fullback, was probably the oldest man on the field. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I said to Peter in the build up and the, the tactics bits and the, mark him tight you know mm. don't give him room and he did and um, I think it was about 10 or 12 minutes from the end um, in those days they, uh, they put a number up mm. uh, and the teams were 1 to 11 and um, I had a look and they were sticking this number 11 up and I thought oh that's good yeah uh, yeah but Peter had done his job uh -huh. and Tommy Doc was bringing him off. And um, Tommy told me uh, years later, I was great, uh, Gordon Hill told me, I think I met him once. And um, he was a chirky, chirpy, oh, cockney yeah. type. Yeah. And uh, as he came off, uh, well, he, at first, when he saw the 11, he, he turned around and he went yeah. around the other side of the field. Yeah. And Tommy, they had to keep telling him, get off, get off. Yeah. And he eventually, the ref stopped the game and he, he pointed 
uh, 11 and so he's gone off but apparently as he's coming by Tommy he said that 11 does that mean me and Tommy said ah. no the whole bloody team <laughs> <laughs> well Gordon Hill in the semi-final after they'd beaten Derby yeah. he he gave us probably the biggest incentive ever because they said so you got Southampton in the final yeah. you know what do you think your chances and he went who's Southampton ah, never right. heard of them yeah well I use so, little things like that yeah. in team talks yeah and, and say like, you know let's show them yeah. Uh, no, yeah. It, it amuses me a little bit now about psychology and mm. all these different things. It's never been any different, you know. No. You, you no. use things like that. Or you picked up what people had said, and, and you would bring it up in your team mm. talks and that. Mm. But uh, no, I, I think that uh, all round it was a fantastic day out. Yeah. Uh, for everybody. Yeah. And and um, I mean, I can go down into Romsey in a minute and buy me newspaper or whatever. And probably somebody will stop me and they'll mention those days, but they'll usually tell me where they were the day after. Right, yeah, the celebrations. Uh, and on the Sunday. Yeah. The, everybody yeah. wasn't at Wembley, but no. uh, uh, I mean, it was the biggest turnout ever, I think, yeah. in, in yeah. Southampton's history. Yeah. Uh, I think it covered 19 or 20 miles the bus around, and it took ages and ages. It mm. was lovely. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to mention the fans at Wembley. Obviously, mm. when you came through the tunnel with the yellow and blue balloons, because that. That, yeah. Because we'd beaten Aston Villa in the, yeah. the third round and their fans had started that with their balloons at the Dell. Right. And and then every round then afterwards the, the balloons went up. So was it uh, something that you... Because obviously United uh, were vastly outnumbered us at Wembley. Well, um, they shouldn't have done. I mean, but I presume in those days... They got the neutral tickets, basically. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Well, um, and of course, you're talking about yellow and blue. We, we lost the toss sort of thing. Right. Or yeah. wore the strip. Uh-huh. And... Um, Probably the first time we'd worn that, was it? I the think yellow and that, blue? that particular one. I can't probably. remember what the away strip was. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyway, they were at, at the tunnel end, weren't mm. they, our supporters? And uh, the best bit was, of course, at the end. Yeah. <laughs> coming yeah. off yeah. To, to go in the tunnel and to see them all there. And um, it was fantastic. I mean, uh-huh. nobody went out early. No, no, no. no. The red and white no. lot did, but... Yeah. Uh, and after the team had done its lap of honour, they could come and, and be in front yeah. of our people. It was lovely. Yeah. But a bit like the, the team built during the game, so the support got louder and louder. I, I thought. I, I, they... think, I think, to be fair, if, if you were speaking truthfully, I think the supporters were, were going up for a day out. Mm. A fantastic day out. Their team was up there. And I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I know how passionate supporters are, and thank God they are. And they would want to win, mm. but if you really pin them down, they would say factually, "How can we win Against. second division? Yeah. Look who they yeah. are, and all this sort of thing. Yeah. They've been there before, and all that. Mm. And we well, let's enjoy it. Okay. And, you know, but to win it, yeah, um, I think really it, it started to sink in the longer the game. Well, went. I can remember at half time that I, I heard we're going to win the cup. Oh, that he, you know, yeah, yeah. where Southampton were going to win the cup, and that, and that yeah. as a sixteen-year-old lad at the time, that yeah. kind of hey, we got a chance here. Yeah, you know, but we I, could we I, could do this. Yeah, and I think I brought that over at half time. Yeah, you know, yeah. And we talk and that, and um, and I think we, we we the longer it went, we all believed. Mm. You've got mm. to believe anyway. As I said before the game, we believed, yeah. and then it, it showed. Um, with the first half display from both sides, mm. that hey, hey, hang on, this is. Yeah, yeah. It's there for yeah. the taking, you know, and um, wonderful and, and, memories. And, and, yeah, yeah, fantastic. <laughs>